What's up, YouTube? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hope you all are doing well in this new year of 2021. I just wanted to get on here, and I know it's been a while, um, to share my progress and um, future plans for my senior project that you guys probably don't know about yet. Uh, it's a tool changing water cooled 3D printer. And so I'm going to go through what I've done so far, what I plan to do, yada, yada, yada. I'm working on build, getting a GitHub together. And you'll just have to bear with me on that because I've only ever downloaded stuff on GitHub. I've never created stuff to go on GitHub. So uh, I need a little grace there, but um, I'm really excited about this project. Uh, some overview real quick. It's gonna be a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter by 440 millimeter build volume. And it's a Core XY. And it's got some uh, so, some cool features as to why I created it. I'm not building a new printer I am taking an existing printer that I have found and um, slapping e3d's tool changing hardware on it so basically it's the the kind of top level to it so I will show you around what I've done in CAD so far so starting off once I get my big face out of the way give me two seconds there we go. Okay, so this is the, the tool changer. I'm using, I was uh, gonna use the Titan Aqua from E3D and I was all on board for that. And I was even gonna use a BMG a Bontech extruder. Uh, it, was a, it was a clone, uh, water-cooled, somebody had used um, in the 3D printer form I was a part of. And I guess I should really just back up one second. The Printer I'm using the platform is called the Hevort, I believe is how you say it. Basically, um, it's a Hypercube Evolution variant, and then the guy who created it's just his initials ORT, uh, so H E V O R T. And so there's a lot of attractive features that I will dive into uh, later that I um, really wanted in a 3D printer. So that's why I selected that one. But here you can see it on screen. My CAD mouse isn't working, so we're stuck to the the shift and mouse drag right now. Uh, let me close this. So basically, uh, it's a Core XY 3D printer. You can see the steppers are going to be located outside because we're going to have a heated build volume, and I'll get to that later. But we're going to have a, a pretty hefty size build um, XY area and then a good Z area. It's bigger than my Delta. Um, um, so that's nice. We have high wind rails, uh, just some generic ball screws. I could go super expensive on the ball screws, but I just don't have the budget for it right now. Um, and the tools will be docked in the back. It'll basically just be using E3D's tools and the, all the hardware for that. I didn't want to dive into making my own. Uh, that's not really the project. The project is water cooling the hot ends and, um, making it tool changing and that's enough in and of itself so uh, one really cool feature that i'll just touch on briefly is the triple z bed leveling and so you put a bl touch on this thing uh, like a lot of printers do today and it'll probe 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 and then it'll actually be able to level itself with these individual ball screws and people have actually done a four corner version of this uh, just because they've done huge builds, like a 600 millimeter one, and that's where it would be more necessary. But for my application right now, I think I'll be okay. And so the electronics bay is off to the right. I have this frame built. I'll go show you it downstairs in a minute. But for the tools, so I, I banged my head against the wall for a while on the tools. So here you can see once this opens, I was going to use the Titan Aqua within, from E3D um, just because it's water cooled. That's the only thing I could find really that was water cooled that would fit my size requirements. And this is the BMG Aqua that someone created within the group. It would cool the motor. You can see this is the water cooled plate here. It would cool the extruder side and it would cool the motor, which is what I wanted. It gives you direct drive, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it, seemed to work, it was going to work out well, well, but it's just too big. I mean, that's a lot of mass to be dangling off the edge. So I was like, there's got to be something different. So I 
uh, came across the Mosquito Liquid. So from Slice Engineering. Uh, it's a little bit pricey, but I mean, look how small that is. Look how much smaller that is. And you could easily add in some kind of inline uh, direct drive extruder on top with these four mounting holes, which I probably will do. Uh, if not, I can just do a Bowden setup, which would be fine too. It would make the hot end super light, or the whole tool, you know, mass, the, the pickup tool, the tool itself, the hot end, the whole nine yards. That would be very uh, lightweight, which has its obvious advantages. So I, the other day, I made this real simple um, mounting bracket for the Titan liquid, or the, excuse me, the Mosquito liquid. Put some screws in it. I think this will work pretty well. So it's obviously pretty overbuilt. I could probably simplify that, but who doesn't like overbuilt? I don't want it to break. We'll see. But that was the plan there. Or is the plan, rather. And so some of you guys may be wondering how much is this all going to cost, and I don't even have a total yet. But here's a spreadsheet I've been putting together. I'll zoom in a little bit for your eyes. And this actually needs to go out. There we go. So I have a total budget of around, of exactly $2,750, basically. And I've bought basically frame components so far. And here's just some other... This is going to be a very expensive category. Uh, the Duet boards, I'm using Duet 3. I'm going to pair it with the Raspberry Pi 4 so it can run single board computer mode. Uh, I can do a separate video on that. Um have the daughter board. As you can see, I'm going to have two solid state relays because I'm going to have a heated enclosure and a heated bed. And so those are going to be high wattage um, pullers. And so the bed's going to be, I think, 1,200 watts. Yeah. And the the heater for the enclosure is going to be 1,000 watts. And so I have to also be careful on how I cycle those on and off because a standard 15 amp circuit can get overloaded pretty quick. That's only 1800 watts to play with. So I'm gonna have to heat up the enclosure first, then heat up the bed while the enclosure heater's cycling on and off and you kind of get the picture. Uh, you could also do 220 volt or 240, whatever, like a dryer plug, but I want this to be easily replicable if that's a word. Uh, so other people can uh, make this project too. And I don't want to have a dryer plug be a constraining factor because not everybody has that, A. And B, it's kind of expensive to put in. I mean, it's only 100 bucks or so for the wire and the whatever. But then you got to hire an electrician if you don't know how to do it yourself. You get the picture. But uh, we got the Mosquito Hot Ends. We got two of those tools so far. That's, I think, all that my budget's going to allow. And I might even have to drop that to one and just put a uh, air cooled, a cheaper air cooled one on just for demonstrating the tool changing uh, ability for now. But in the future, I I want to I have planned this to be able to support four tools, and uh, we'll go into the water cooling, thermodynamics uh, stuff I've done with that too. Got our heated cartridges and the thermistors. So these are going to be high temperature ones. So I'm going to be planning on printing. You guys may be wondering, why does he need a heated enclosure? I want to print PEEK, so P-E-E-K and P-E-K-K. And then some other um, aerospace grade material, uh, not even aerospace grade, just high temperature, you know, crazy plastic materials. And you can get those filled with carbon fiber, which I've also bought the Olson Ruby high temperature nozzle. So I'm excited for that. Um, so if we turn all these to yeses, it will calculate the price of all this section. So I'm spending over a thousand in just that section. And that's not even all the electronics yet, but that's the bulk of it. It's just going to be minor things like terminal blocks, wire. I don't really need to buy for cause my, my work right now where I'm interning is actually sponsoring this project. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And they have a lot of, you know, little components like that. Screws, bolts. I don't have to buy too much of that unless I have like large quantities where it makes sense. Um, and wire. So they have tons of wire there. So I, I, I'm pretty okay in that department. But electronic components, I have some stepper motors to go, which I've kind of specced out. I'm using NEMA 23s for the X and Y gantry. 
just because I want to be able to add the milling tool. Uh, if you've seen that on E3D, E3D's uh, promo video they just put out. So we can do some subtractive manufacturing too. That's pretty awesome. And just the, to compensate for the added size of the tool head, um, being able to throw that around with a little more ease and being a bigger gantry, um, just bigger is a little bit better and it adds room for expansion in the future. Not that I couldn't buy them in the future, but um, it'll, they offer more torque and higher velocity. And so we can get some pretty crazy print speeds uh, off of it as well off of it as well especially if I do like a uh, super volcano type of build um, on the hot end so there's a lot of different things we can do with this tool changing ability which is exciting so you can see just adding that section up I have a remaining balance of 1200 bucks basically and these are not maybe final prices I can maybe find stuff a little bit cheaper but um, the the, the next biggest cost is going to be the high wind rails. Those priced out are going to be around $700 to $800, I believe, all the rails combined. And then ball screws are probably not another 100 so we're squeaking up on the total pretty quick. But everything's pretty much bought for except the stepper motors are compensated for on this list almost. Uh, I don't have everything on here, obviously, but just little odds and ends. Um, I got to complete on this yet, but... I'm really excited on this project, so it's going to be an interesting build. The firmware is probably going to be the biggest beast to, to tackle, being able to uh, figure out how to do the, the tool changing firmware stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting. So real quick before we go downstairs, um, the first CAD model, this one that you saw me do, this is a 400, 400, it's the correct size, but I just wanted to restart. There's so many joints and it's constrained all together. I want to get this uh, wobble wings, is what it's called, um, correctly sized and get all the parts in. So I'm kind of basically redoing the entire CAD model. So I kind of started over and um, in this back section, this is for... Um, being able to have the tools mounted off the back we need a little extra room so i had to add an extra support um, and i'll eventually upload all this documentation um, just bear with me school is starting up soon so i'm trying to get as much of this done as possible senior years you know super super crazy hopefully it's not too bad for me but i've got to study for the fe exam too so yeehaw um so down to the basement now Let me show you more parts of it. It has a uh, glass transition temperature of about, I think, 147 Celsius. So I'm going to be using these parts in the enclosure, which is important because uh, the, temp or the temperature in the enclosure is going to be 90 Celsius. So these parts came out amazing. And it's carbon fiber filled, so it's uh, pretty doggone durable. It feels like you're holding sandpaper. It's pretty rough, but... All I had to use was some uh, glue stick to hold that down in my row stock. Printed it well. These these are some honkers here. These uh, the motor mounts. The motor's going to sit under here, and then the shaft goes all the way up through there. So, a lot to do yet on this, but I'm excited. I got the frame together. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like and consider giving me a subscribe. If you didn't, you know what to do as well. So, uh, see you next time.